Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode of College and Career Pathways, where every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m., we provide you with information on various colleges and universities, financial aid resources, skilled trade professions, technical schools and training programs, career exploration, career readiness skills, employment opportunities, all designed to help you make the best decisions possible. I'm Tony Curitan, your host, and today we are with Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union. Uh, we are continuing with our financial literacy series. We are going to be talking today about mortgages and understanding mortgages. Colleen, welcome back. We're so glad to have you. You are such a treasure to us. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I, I really enjoy, I really, as long as you can keep coming up with topics, I'm, I'm happy to keep coming back. Uh, I, I, I enjoy it as well. Uh, Good deal. As you mentioned, today we're looking at uh, mortgages, which are specific loans for getting a home, getting a house, as opposed to a car or anything else. So as usual, we've got an adorable introductory video and I will see you in a few minutes. Hey, what's the big idea? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you lived in there. I don't. Well, not yet. I'm just here for the open house. Are you gonna get it? Well, I'm not sure. It kind of depends on the mortgage rates. Ha! Ah, good one. You're not joking. Sorry, I didn't realize hermit crabs need mortgages. Of course we do. It's the biggest purchase of our lives. We usually need a loan to make it happen. If I were you, I would just find the mortgage with the lowest interest rate and go with that. It's not that simple. When shopping for a mortgage or any loan, financial institutions have products with an advertised APR, which stands for annual percentage rate. That's what I mean. Just go with the one that has the lowest APR. But you can't compare them at face value. The APR represents a combination of things. The interest rate, yeah, but also a wide range of additional costs and, and if you're looking at an adjustable rate mortgage the APR doesn't even <gasps> mortgages come in two basic types fixed rate and adjustable rate also known as variable rate in a fixed rate mortgage the interest rate is set when you take out the loan and it does not change over time the amount you pay monthly will stay the same for the entire term of your loan in an adjustable rate mortgage the interest rate and therefore your monthly payment is based on current interest rates in the economy. If the index they're based on goes up, so does your rate, meaning you'll be paying more. If the index decreases, so do your payments. An adjustable rate mortgage often has a lower initial interest rate, which is very appealing. Fixed rate, adjustable rate, how do you choose the best one? It's always a trade-off. Fixed rate mortgages are more stable and easy to budget for, but have a higher interest rate overall. Adjustable mortgages have better rates, but are riskier because your rate may increase over time. You have to think about your income, your future, how long you plan to live in the home, your financial risk tolerance, and that's on top of weighing different mortgage types, interest rates, and amortization schedules. Zoom tight. Huh? No, no, no. Amortization. It's how your loan repayment is broken down into regular installments over a fixed period of time. An amortization schedule shows you how much of each payment is going toward interest and how much of it is going toward the principal. Is it that hard to figure out? If your interest rate is 3%, then 3% of your payment goes towards interest. Am I right? Your face is telling me I'm not right. That 3% is the annual interest rate. If you take the total amount owing on your mortgage and multiply it by 3%, the result is what you'll pay in interest in the current year, but the monthly payments work a little differently. Let's say you take out a 25-year mortgage for $150,000. It's a fixed rate, so you're paying $711 a month. In your first payment, $375 will go towards interest, and only $336 will go toward your outstanding balance. So even though you've made a payment of $711, your balance has only decreased by $336. The following month, because your outstanding balance is now $149,664, the interest portion of your monthly payment will also be slightly lower, and the principal portion will be slightly higher. So looking at the entire stretch, 
Even though a big chunk of my monthly payments are going towards interest at the start, over time, that kind of flip-flops. And by the end, more of my payment is going towards principal than towards interest. Now you're getting it. Using this example, after 25 years, you will have made over $213,000 in payments on your $150,000 loan. Whoa, that's serious. All the more reason to know exactly what you're getting into before signing everything. People get into trouble by committing to mortgages they don't understand. It happened to a friend of mine. The bank came and took his shell away. He had to move into a half-eaten ice cream cone until he could figure things out. That's rough. Mortgages can be an empowering experience or a living shell. It all comes down to your understanding of the mortgage products available, honesty regarding your personal finances, and clarity about your life situation. As for me, this is a little too much home for my budget. Time to go house hunting. Keep it real. Okay, demystifying mortgages. And as I mentioned, a mortgage is specifically a loan for uh, a home, a house. It could be a second home or a first home. Um, it could be a condo, but you are referring to a building, a house, when you talk about getting a mortgage. And as I mentioned, it's probably the biggest uh, loan you'll get of your life, you know, uh, like very most likely over a hundred thousand dollars, potentially two, three, four hundred thousand dollars, and that that's a lot of money to come up with at one time. Uh, that's a lot of money to come up with, you know, even over a few years. So being able to make such a large purchase, there's a lot of hoops to go through, and there's a lot of steps to go through, and it seems really overwhelming. Uh, so when shopping for a mortgage, the APR is the first thing you think about. And that's okay. That's what I've been telling you since I've been talking to you. You know, credit card APR, watch out for that APR. You know, your, your car loan APR, you know, make sure you got a good APR. It's absolutely important, but unlike an auto loan, there are these other fees attached to it, attached to a mortgage, excuse me. So the interest rate is not the only thing. Uh, for example, you see the commercials for, you know, five minute mortgages and, and you call and they give you this really low rate and you're like, oh, perfect, great. But they don't tell you about, you know, the fees that it takes to get there and double or triple the closing costs. So absolutely interest rate's important, but it's not the only thing. You need to decide between a fixed rate and an adjustable rate mortgage. And I'll make that real easy for you. You're going to pick a fixed rate. Um, fixed rates can be higher uh, because they stay the same. Right now in the, the climate, mortgage rates are so low. They're the lowest they've been in, in you know, a decade. So if you're interested in getting a home or if you're interested in refinancing your home, which we can get to later, it's a great time to get a fixed rate. Whereas there's other points, the years go by where uh, it may be multiple percentage points higher. And if you think about two, three percent of two hundred thousand dollars, that's thousands of dollars every single year extra that you're paying. So you can ask about adjustable rate mortgages, but again, we're going to stick with predictable. We're going to stick with, you know, what, what we know, what isn't going to change. Um, if the economy changes, your interest rate could get higher. Again, remember your credit card variable rate interest could get higher. So now you're thinking of multiple bills instead of just one getting higher. 
Uh, if it goes down, you know, your interest rate could go down too. But like I said, currently our fixed rates are really low. So it's, it's a great deal. Uh, the fixed rate means your interest rate and your payment stays the same. Now that's huge. Similar to a car payment, you know, you get a car, it's $200 a month, they pay $200 a month. After 60 months, they sent my final payment. You know, now I'm all done. Uh, making payments for 25 or 30 years, you know, to have that same rate, to have a predictable rate, to have a predictable payment that's not gonna change uh, is, is a big deal. So it's easier to budget for. Uh, again, as a rule, fixed rates will tend to have a little higher interest rate and that's true for credit cards, mortgages, shop around, right? Just shop around, compare costs. Uh, adjustable rate changes over time. I'm saying the mortgage rates are wonderful right now. If we get back together in five years or 10 years, that may not be still true, um, but adjustable rates is definitely harder to, to budget for. Uh, we look back at that, that housing bubble where uh, all of a sudden people's rates jumped up and people couldn't afford their homes anymore. And it was, it was really tragic. So before, last time we talked about potentially owning versus renting. You know, do I want to get into all the complications of owning a home? Do I want to rent? Once you've decided, okay, you know what? I am going to buy. Now, you know, what's the right mortgage for you? What's the right loan for you? You know, you're taking out, you're borrowing a large sum of money. So how helpful that company is, how you know, easy it is to communicate, um, how quick a response time it is, all of those things are gonna matter. So how does the mortgage repayment work? Again, what we're most familiar with, $200 a month, I pay the 200, when I'm done, the loan's over. An amortization schedule, is how your loan is broken down into regular installments. And this is true for all loans. Uh, we've seen those where, you know, if you're paying the first month and the second month and the third month, this is how much interest you will have paid over the full length of the loan. And mortgages specifically, because they are such a large amount to, own, such a large amount to loan out, the lender is collecting interest right away. You know, just in case, what if you disappear? What if you pass away? What if um, the house burns down? You know, they wanna start getting some of their money back right away. So it's not that you pay off the house and then you pay some interest, you're paying both of them uh, the whole time. So looking at an example, $150,000 home, depending on your area, pretty standard. That's low. I would say that is a very affordable house. You can easily, easily find houses for three, four hundred dollars, three, four, three or four hundred thousand dollars. You know, we're looking in, you know, Bloomfield, Birmingham, even Royal Oak. Um, other areas, Madison Heights, Warren, Hazel Park, you know, have uh, lower home prices, but you're, it's very unlikely you're going under a house, under $100,000. Expect to pay at the very least $100,000. So 3%, which by the way, is a great rate. If someone says, uh, you know, I'm paying 3% for mortgage, that's good. That's actually very, very good. Uh, times 3% will be $711 a month for the base mortgage payment. Again, we're not looking at insurance, we're not looking at fees, we're not looking at anything else. Your base payment would be 711. dollars 3% of that would be $4,500. So meaning 
$4,500 is the annual interest. If we were to divide that by 12 months, here's the amount of interest you pay this month, right? And that looks like a lot. I mean, that is, to think that you're actually paying more towards the interest than you are towards the, the principal, it's, it can be tough. But again, we're looking at the long term. Uh, some of it goes into interest. Some of it goes to principal. You don't have to worry about that. You just send you just send out one payment, and they split it up. But understand that next month your mortgage is not going to be seven hundred and eleven dollars less, or the, the the balance that you owe is not going to be seven hundred and eleven dollars less. For example, as you start making payments, right? We made a payment. Uh, paid seven hundred, paid seven eleven, three hundred and seventy five dollars of it was interest. Next month it's slightly lower interest. You make another payment the next month, it's slightly lower interest, slightly lower interest. We see how that moves on. You can see how towards the end of the loan, or as we approach the end of the loan, these numbers are much much smaller, and you're contributing to the full payment a big chunk of it. If you pay extra, let's say $711 is your payment and you send $800, right? Because what do we do? We pay more than the minimum. We always pay more than the minimum. The minimum is, is just, just that, the bare minimum. If we pay extra on top of the minimum, that does go towards the principal. So if you're concerned that, oh man, you know, only half my payment's going towards the principal, pay as much as you can, as often as you can. You know, if your payment is 711, pretend it's 750 and always make a 750 payment or always make a 760, you know, so there's that little bit that starts taking the, uh, the principal down as well. They mentioned in the loan, or excuse me, they mentioned in the video that, I mean, even though 3% sounds like a really tiny number, I mean, that's $63,000. That means by the time you're done paying this off, if you were to pay that 7-Eleven every month, extra $60,000. So you've really paid 213,000. Now, 25 years have gone by since you got the mortgage. So, is the house what is wrong today is the house worth more than that how much is the house worth is the house worth 150,000 most likely it's worth much much more than 150,000 25 years has gone by you've made improvements to the house you've maybe replaced the roof gotten some new windows um if you were to sell it today maybe you could sell it for you know $250,000 so even though you paid way more than you actually bought it for, because so much time has passed and as an asset, it appreciated in value, you could be getting that money back. Now, let's say you've only been living in this house for five years, right? The value is not going to necessarily jump up all that much in five years. It might go up a little. But if you're selling a home that you've only been making payments on for four or five years, you pretty much still owe the same amount. So you, you would have to sell the house for more. And that's one of those reasons you really don't want to get into that contract unless you, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to stay here. You might not, but as far as I know, I'm going to stay here. understanding before you sign one thing that is actually not my favorite about this particular uh presentation is how much it stresses that your payment is 711 dollars 711 dollars is the loan is the principal towards the loan but in the same way that when you get a car loan you don't just have the car loan. You also have to pay for insurance. You also have to pay for gas. You know, you also have to play, pay for license plates and renewing it and registration. Similarly, 
for mortgages, you also have homeowner's insurance you're required to pay. There's um, title insurance, mortgage insurance, um, flood insurance sometimes is required. Um, taxes, because think about it, when you're purchasing a car, you're purchasing an, an object, right? An object that can be moved, moved around. When you're purchasing a home, you're not just purchasing the object on top of it, but the, the land that it's sitting on. I mean, literally the property lines, you know, if someone wants to build a fence, if someone starts, you know, putting furniture or playing in your yard and they say, oh, no, this, is, this land is our land. And you say, I'm going to go to the city office and prove that it's my land. Uh, what if they find oil in your backyard? What if you find gold in your backyard? It's that this plot of land, you know, belongs to you. So you pay taxes on that land, right, to the city, to the state, to the government. So if your payment was 711, my best guess would be you would probably be making about a $950 a month mortgage payment. So instead of just 711, you're really sending out 950. Uh, it can be an empowering experience. Uh, it can be a burden because there's a lot of steps to go through. Uh, if you find a house you like, I looked around, I found a house I like. Okay, so now I need an inspection. You know, we hire someone to do an inspection. They're trained, they're trained to look at details, uh, electricity, uh, plumbing, you know, the age of the roof, the foundation, you know, all these things that we can't really tell just by looking at it. And then they come back with a report that says, these are all the things wrong, you know, with the house. And there's, there's going to be something. I mean, no house is perfect. There's, you know, a little bit of mold in the basement. There's uh, the roof should be replaced within a few years. Um, you know, the plumbing should be replaced in a few years. It's, it's giving you a sense of what are you getting into. In addition to that, an appraiser. So let's say I found a house I like. Uh, they're selling it for $150,000. It is also required to get an appraiser, someone who comes out and, again, trained to look in detail and go around and say, mm, this house is worth this much, right? That should have already happened uh, before the people who were selling the house decided to sell it at 150 But what if it comes back? What if that appraiser comes back and says, this house is worth $125,000? Well, if I were the one purchasing it and it's only worth 125,000, now I have a serious problem paying 150,000. I'm not paying that much more than it's worth. You're going to have to lower, you know, the price down. And that's, you know, that kind of makes sense, right? Uh, maybe if it came back and said this house is worth $175,000, uh, you know, maybe the homeowners could say, well, we've actually decided to bump up the price a bit. You know, if you still want it, now you got to pay 160000 So those are just the basics. Once you have those figured out, okay, I still want it after the inspection. I still want it after uh, the appraisal. Um, you're comparing mortgages. You're comparing rates. Uh, you're comparing homeowner's insurance, just like you're comparing car insurance. Um, that Instead of when you pay your car, when you have a car, you make one payment to your car payment, you make one payment to your car insurance, uh, you pay for, you know, repairs separately and you pay for gas separately. When it's your, when it is mortgage, they kind of put it all together and it's really convenient. So 711 is the payment for the house, right? That's the, the loan for the mortgage. but in, it includes, it adds on your homeowner's insurance and you have annual taxes. Taxes are, again, depending which city you live in, thousands of dollars, could be $5,000 a year, could be eight, could be $15,000 a year. So they, uh, your mortgage company takes that number, divides it by 12, 
and you and add that amount. And then when tax time comes due and the city says, can I please have $3,000? Instead of you coming up with $3,000, it's already been collected you know, throughout the year. And the mortgage company goes and pays the tax bill for you. You never even see it. It's, it's just completely taken care of. So that's why I just really want to let you know it's that $950 payment. The $711 is important, but it's required for mortgage or it's required homeowners insurance. It's required to pay your taxes. Um, so every month you will be paying definitely more than $711. And I keep saying, ask questions, ask questions ask questions. Don't sign anything and there will be a stack of paperwork to sign when it comes to buying a home. You want to be 100% sure, crystal clear. Ask multiple times, how much do I have to bring to closing? Why do I have to bring that much? What is this fee paying for? Why am I paying for this fee? You know, it should be explained to you. If anything doesn't make sense, if anything you think they're kind of glossing over uh, yeah, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Well, it's kind of a red flag. Right. Something else. And I guess that was it. <laughs> Something else for mortgages uh, is you want to ask about the servicing. Servicing is paying the bill, right? Uh, if you get a car loan, you pay, you know, if you go to MSGCU, you send your bill to MSGCU to pay for your car. You get a mortgage from MSGCU, you pay your bill to MSGCU. Makes sense, right? Specifically for mortgages, because they are so large, uh, financial institutions will sell them to other companies and you'll get a letter that says, hi, you still have the same mortgage, but you're gonna be making payments to us instead now. And maybe who knows, five, 10 years later, few years, you get another letter that says, hi, we have your mortgage now. So you just keep making payments, but you just go ahead and keep paying us. So it's not terrible, but it's also not great. You know, it could be confusing. Uh, keep track. MSGCU will service your loan the entire time. Ask, are you going to sell my loan? Or am I going to be making payments to you for the next 30 years? I want to know exactly where I'm going to be making payments. I want to know where I can call someone, where I can talk to someone. Once they sell your mortgage to, you know, a company that maybe you can get a hold of someone on the phone, it's harder to deal with. So it's all about that personal connection. Go in, talk to someone, have them point it out, have them go through a whole thing with you. Uh, we at MSGCU have a home buyers workshop, uh, kind of like this, like an hour long. And if you attend the home buyers workshop, uh, we give you a coupon for $375 towards an appraisal. Unfortunately, yes, they're, they're that expensive, um, which is, I mean, that's like 400 bucks if you end up getting a mortgage through MSGCU. So it's not that we just really want you to get the mortgage. We want you to understand what you do, what you are doing. We want you to make an informed choice. So we don't require it, but we really, really encourage anyone who's even interested in getting a mortgage to attend the home buying uh, free workshop. So if you're thinking about it, um, lots of credit unions do it. Uh, MISTA, uh, some of the state uh, put it on but it is well worth your time to sit and listen again and maybe a whole nother time uh, before you get a mortgage uh, about all the details. This is really an overview because like I said, there's a lot of little hoops and steps along the way uh, that you gotta do when you get your mortgage, but those are the details. The moral of the story is you provide everything you need. You're applying, just like any other loan, you're applying. You may or may not be approved. You may or may not be approved for the amount you wanted. You may be approved, but at a higher interest rate than you wanted. So again, it's not just you walk in and say, all right, what kind of mortgage rates do you have? Well, they're going to turn around and ask you and say, okay, well, how much money do you make? And what's your credit score? 
and how much do you have saved and you know all these other questions do you have how many other debts do you have you know do you have two other homes oh my goodness really you think you're going to be paying for a third home i don't know about that are there any questions is there anything uh mortgage related that's concerning or seems different from another loan So Colleen, um, how how credit worthy do you have to be in applying for a mortgage as opposed to a car or credit card? How how much more scrutiny do you do you undergo? Uh, definitely more, definitely more. Um, again, for a car. Uh, if you appear risky on paper, you know, you, you have 590, you know, 585 credit, you're not that you're kind of risky. Loaning you 15, well, $10,000, excuse me, is very different than loaning that same risky person, you know, $200,000. So you're way less likely to get such a large amount of money. Um, and you have to ha prove many more things for a car. Are you going to be able to make these payments over the next couple years? You know, for a home, okay, what's your, is your job a career? You know, do you just have part-time jobs? You know, how stable does your life look? Um, they run your credit report, but they run all three. So not just one of them, but your Experian, your TransUnion, and your Equifax, all three credit reports. And then they put them together just to make sure, you know, you might have one good one and one a little less. Um, you need to really prove your income. And that sounds kind of obvious. But what I mean is you show your bank statements, you show your paychecks. Okay. And they say, well, if you make this much a month, you've got $10,000 sitting in an account over there. Where did that come from? And I say, well, that, that's just, I just, you know, just had it. No, where did that come from? Because, uh, hey, if, if my parents just gave it to me, uh, if I won it in the lottery, um, if I stole it, that's illegal. I, just, I don't really have it. So by me saying, oh, I've got this $10,000 here, I'm saying I'm worth and I have saved up $10,000. But really, if I just got a gift, if I just, you know, won it, if I just borrowed it from someone so it could sit in my account while I was being evaluated, that is a problem. Um, if you have a more cash-based job, uh, you know, a hairstylist, um, you know, a landscaper, someone you're, you're really receiving more cash than you are uh, paychecks, you have to account for every bit of cash. Why are you depositing all this cash in your account? Where did this money come from? They need to track where all your money comes from. Uh, you may be lucky enough to get a gift, you know, of a few thousand dollars from a, a parent or, or a grandparent, and you have to let them know. You have to put that in there and show this came from a parent. You know, this isn't actually my money. Um, so it's really detailed. Now, uh, you're a couple, uh, myself, my mortgage, I did it myself, myself. I could, uh, go through and get a mortgage with someone else, you know, with my fiance, put both of our names on it, have them check both of our credit. We would both be responsible. Well, and that's another idea. You know, maybe if my credit's not quite as good having his name on it would be really beneficial or maybe, you know what, 30 years is a long time and I, I'd rather just keep it in my name. You know, I'm responsible and uh, I'll get some money. I'll get some payments from him, but I, I don't want to be held liable if he, you know, if he does something. Oops, excuse me. Uh, you don't have to have a stellar credit score that uh, you may, oh, I got to have 700. You really don't. You are 
still eligible uh, in the 600s, but 620, I think 620 can be the lowest um, of a credit score and still be considered. Um, again, you may go in for a mortgage, sit down with someone, they go over it with you and say, well, if you did it right now, you know, this is kind of what you'd end up with. But, you know, you should go back, take a few months, pay this off, pay this off and come back and you'll get a, you know, much, much uh, better deal. So if you, uh, if you don't like sharing personal information, if you don't like, uh, well, we need another bank statement. Well, we need another, uh, you know, Roth IRA statement. We need another um, savings account statement. You're going to have to provide all of that because they want to be 100% sure this large amount of money that you're going to be able to pay back because what's, what's the consequence for closing on the house for closing like repossessing a car is enough time has gone by without you making a payment that we are now taking this house back we owned it we purchased it and you haven't kept your end of the bargain to pay us back so now we have the house but what what does a credit union want with the house we don't actually want the house you know what do we want we want the money right we want what it's worth so it's a big pain to, well, now we have a house. Now we got to figure out how to sell it. We got to, you know, get a realtor. We got to, we're probably going to sell it for less than it's worth because we just want to get it off our hands. So we do not want to uh, foreclose on houses. You do not want to get foreclosed upon. So all those steps along the way, you're double checking. Let's say you do everything right. You know, you've been paying for five, six years. Then your situation changes. You know, then you lose your job. Then you surprisingly have triplets. Uh, you know, their situation can definitely change unexpectedly. Um, you can try to refinance your loan, which is kind of a reapplying for the same loan, and you may be able to get it a little cheaper. Um, you could uh, ask to, you know, maybe lower. Uh, the payment or say, how about, you know, if you've been paying, let's say, like I said, if it was 7-Eleven and you paid seven fifty well, maybe now you got to go back to paying 7-Eleven, you know, be proactive, talk to your lending company. Don't hide it. I know it's embarrassing. You know, it, you don't want to talk about it. Nobody wants to admit they're having trouble, you know, paying their bills or sustaining themselves, but avoiding it, putting it in a drawer, not answering the phone, honestly just makes it so much worse if you're willing to talk if you're willing to work with someone you know i lost my job I'm, i'd like to help what what can we do what's possible they will work with you so much they'll be much more willing to work with you what what is the typical down payment amount that or percentage that a person can expect to put down when they're purchasing a home uh, three and a half percent is the is the minimum. So at least three and a half percent, which doesn't sound like very much, but I mean, a hundred and fifty thousand dollar house, you're you're looking at you know six six grand. Um, and then there's you know other closing costs on top of it. But I think I mentioned last time, you cannot sign and drive with a home. You cannot say, I'll take it. Uh, I'll start paying next month. You need to make a substantial down payment before they'll even, you know, hand you keys. So again, not just be ready for the payments. You know, you might be paying $950 in rent, so you can afford $950 in mortgage payments, but do you have that money to make the down payment? You cannot roll that into the loan. You can't say, okay, well, I got to pay 5,000 as a down payment. So just add that onto the loan. That's part of the loan. <laughs> it's a requirement that you pay at least this much. Um, if you pay more, if somehow you can pay 10%, 15%, um, it will greatly improve your interest, uh, excuse me, your, you know, your payments over time. But I'd say five, five or 6,000 is probably the, the the base um could go over 10 um what is that based called, on the fluctuation what is that based on well the 
So the three and a half percent is, uh, you know, is the minimum. I believe that's for the, uh, for the, there's FHA loans and BHA loans and different requirements uh, for different ones. Uh, and if you cannot make, I, I mean, I think that's, I'm not sure what that would be if you say, okay, I, I can do it, but I can't make, can't make a down payment. If you're already having issues before the first payment, that's, that's not good. So a lot of people will save for years or sometimes they'll take money out of, uh, you know, they, the retirement fund or, um, you know, the money that you don't touch. Uh, I had my parents bought stocks, you know, for me when I was a baby and they've just sat there. And that's what I did is I, I took, I took a big chunk of money from, uh, what would have ended up being, you know, kind of retirement money because I can make the payments, but let me get that chunk. Let me get that out of the way. Um, in addition to the three and a half percent, it would be your first year of uh, insurance. You need to pay ahead for the whole year of insurance. So that's $1,000. Um, you're covering the, you know, inspection, the appraisal, um, the, there's a fee to, for the process of getting your mortgage done, you know, for, for, uh, to do all of the paperwork, to put it all together. That's about $795. Uh, so there's a lot of those fees when you say, oh, it's 3%. What's, you know, what's that other stuff? Do you get 3% only if you put down 10%? There's also something called buying points. And you'll want to ask about this. Let's say you go in 3%. Okay, we're good. We're going. Uh, then they ask, then they ask, uh, well, uh, instead of 3%, we can give you 2.75%. We'll give you a little bit of a deal, um, but it's going to cost you $1,000. And you're thinking to yourself, oh, my God, $1,000. Why would I pay $1,000 for a quarter of a percent? Well, look at it on paper. Have them show you on paper. What's the difference? In 30 years, how much less is it? A quarter of a percent less. If it's two, three thousand dollars, then yeah, absolutely, I'll pay a thousand to save myself three thousand. You know, uh, if you buy points, let's say you spend, you know, two thousand dollars for half a percent. Uh, if you move pretty quickly, if you don't stay in that house for long enough to be worth your while, then it's not worth your while. Then you spent a thousand dollars and you're not seeing the, the benefits of that lowered interest rate. But if you think you're going to be there a while and you can say, Oh, wow. Well, you know what? In the long run, that tiny bit is going to save me a lot. So I, I'll buy points. You know, you're kind of spending extra to lower um, your interest rate. You can't always do it. You can only do it a little bit. You can't take, you know, whole points off. Um, but that, that can be an option as well. Uh, and sometimes you might get a really, you know, a really great deal. You know, it, save yourself $5,000 for 1000 or, you know, 800 Good deal. Okay. Um, well. I have no more questions. It was a great presentation, as always, very informative. And um, we will bring this session to a close. And I want to thank everyone for joining. Thank you so much, Colleen. And we will see you all next week. Everybody have a great weekend. Have a great weekend. Bye now. Thank you. That was great, Colleen.